Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily Podcast. Coming up, another streaming service is enforcing a password sharing crackdown. Now, let's get into it. Gamers, get ready for London Games Festival 2024. Up to 100,000 visitors from around the world are expected to attend, including fans, developers and investors. There is a screenplay which is getting its debut at the festival this year uh, and that's happening on April 10th and it's open to the public and basically it's sort of a mini conference, a series of talks which is exploring the links between video games and TV shows and films off the back of successes, you know, like The Last of Us, Let Netflix's League of Legends series, Arcane. That's Vicky Jessup, who writes about gaming for The Standard. She's been telling us about some of the expected highlights from the annual event. And there's also, you know, lots of fun events lined up with Now Play This. Uh, their theme this year is um, the kind of quite vague, but liminality or the space between worlds. So that'll include an exhibition from some of the most, you know, exciting indie game designers out there from all over the world, not just in London. The festival programme involves mobile PC and indie games. It also celebrates newer technologies such as virtual reality and augmented reality, and the growing trend of esports. Also included in the lineup is the BAFTA Games Awards on the 11th of April. And Vicky has been explaining which titles are tipped to win big this year. Some of the main games up for nomination this year are Baldur's Gate 3 and Alan Wake 2. Those are the two heavy hitters. They've got the most nominations between them. Um, but there's also, you know, titles like Diablo 4, Legend of Zelda, Spider-Man 2. So between those five, they're likely to sweep it. It's not a done deal though for the big games and there could be a few surprise wins from indie titles. Do keep your eyes peeled for small indie games. You know, Dave the Diver in November, they're also up for awards. They've been generating plenty of buzz. You know, last year, the Game of the Year award went to Vampire Survivor, this very um, small indie game made by London-based studio Ponkel, which I think kind of, um, you know, surprised quite a few people. So, you know, there may be some surprises. The London Games Festival runs from the 9th to the 25th of April. Now. It seems like good things come to those who wait for 90-year-old Ed Dwight. Dwight was America's first ever black astronaut candidate after being selected by President John F. Kennedy back in 1961. But unfortunately, he was never granted the opportunity to fly to space. Until now. The Air Force veteran will be among the six-person crew aboard Blue Origin's upcoming New Shepard flight beyond Earth's atmosphere. Jeff Bezos Blue Origin didn't disclose how much each attendee is paying for the 11-minute experience in zero gravity, but in 2021, the ticket for the very first seat went for $28 million. Dwight, however, is flying for free. He's being sponsored by Space for Humanity and the Jason and Jamie Robinson Foundation. In other space news... There's a solar eclipse happening next week, and forecasters are saying that it will be partially visible from parts of the UK. The celestial event will pass directly over North America on Monday, and total darkness is expected in parts of the states for up to 4 minutes and 28 seconds. Meanwhile in the UK, it will take place at sunset, just before the sun disappears below the horizon at around 8pm. Parts of Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales and the west of England are predicted to get a view of the eclipse, so keep your eyes peeled. A study suggests that annual prostate cancer cases are set to double worldwide between 2020 and 2040, rising from 1.4 million to 2.9 million. The analysis from the Lancet Commission says annual deaths from the disease are projected to increase by 85% to almost 700,000 over the same time frame, mainly among men in low- and middle-income countries. The researchers argue that the Informed Choice Programme for prostate cancer screening with testing, which is common in high-income countries, may lead to over-testing and unnecessary treatment in older men, and under-testing in high-risk younger men. Instead, the authors advocate for early detection programmes for those at high risk and want urgent programmes to raise awareness of the disease. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, another streaming service starts a password sharing crackdown. To stay up to date with all the latest tech and science news, just hit follow during the break. Welcome back. The quest to power homes with solar panels in space has just passed a major milestone. Oxfordshire-based Space Solar plans to power more than a million homes by the 2030s with a mile-wide complex of mirrors and solar panels orbiting 22,000 miles above the planet. 
It's designed for harvesting constant sunlight requires the system to rotate towards the sun, whatever its position, while still sending power to a fixed receiver on the ground. That technology has now been shown to work for the first time at Queen's University Belfast, with the wireless beam successfully steered across a lab to turn on a light. Samsung says it expects its profits for the first three months of 2024 to jump by more than 900%. It comes as prices of chips have recovered from a post-pandemic slump, and demand for artificial intelligence-related products booms. The South Korea-based tech giant is the world's largest maker of memory chips, smartphones and televisions. The company is scheduled to release a detailed financial report on the 30th of April. And finally, brace yourselves people because another password sharing crackdown is on the way this year. And this time, it's the turn of Disney+. Disney chief executive Bob Iger said in an interview with American network CNBC that the streaming platform would start taking action against the behavior from June in some countries, and then a full rollout in September. The move is designed to boost signups and revenue for the platform, and follows on from a similar policy made by streaming rival Netflix last year, who reportedly went on to add 22 million subscribers in the second half of 2023. Unfortunately, it is bad news for those of us who rely on someone else's account to enjoy series like The Mandalorian, Grey's Anatomy and The Simpsons. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for The Standard Podcast for all the latest news and analysis. Tech and Science Daily will be back on Monday at 1pm. See you then. Remember to search for Tech and Science Daily wherever you get your podcasts or click the link in the video description so you never miss an episode.